Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast here at MTD HQ. I am joined today by three of the guys from the Hoffman Group. So, guys, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Simon Ashworth. I'm a senior application engineer. Cover the whole of the UK, but also support these guys going forwards as the team is hopefully getting bigger. Um, and I've been with the business about nine years. I'm Paul Walker. I'm an application engineer for the north of England. I've been with the company over 18 years. I'm Lee Henderson. I'm the, the new boy. I've only been with the company five years. <laughs> like I'm an AT for the south of England, everything from Birmingham down. I like how we say five years is the new boy. We've got a bit of experience <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. room, haven't we? A few old farts here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the grey hair, you would think it was longer. <laughs> so what is it like working for Hoffman? <laughs> no two, well, no two days are the same for us. You know, we go from small, you know, subcontract CNC factories right through to multinational companies. Uh, luckily for us, the products that we have cover such a wide area of production that we we see everyone and we are involved in podcasts which is something new to us all i think um uh ranging right through to you know getting on the nuts and bolts of going onto a shop floor for customers i think it's great that you guys literally and we'll get onto this a bit later your catalog i think i think it was you simon that said you do everything within a 30 foot we like to say we do everything for within the machine and uh, cnc machines and and a 30 foot around it so um, anything you will need in a day-to-day -day basis you guys can do yeah hopefully yeah <laughs> now there's always some oddball requests for something yeah i can that, guarantee that, you someone will someone will, that, uh, that isn't part of the ninety-five thousand <laughs> items that we have but, yeah but yeah. don't you have that ninety-five thousand and one product we have another half million on the system that we can get that aren't in the catalogue so really, there should be a tool for everybody in that catalogue. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice none of us are that confident about saying, yeah, you definitely, because... <laughs> well, we don't want to wish we were challenged. Yeah, someone's yeah. going to find something someone's that awesome, we can't yeah. do. Going to beat us. But obviously, that must make it quite interesting then that you never know what you're actually turning up to. Yeah, it, it does. It's um, Like you say, we can... Everything from milling, turning, you know, you name it, we never quite know what we're going to turn up to or what the customer's needs are uh, but i think across the catalog we can look after most people um quite well you know and the products work really well uh, so we don't have to worry about is this going to work against because we know it does well talking about products you guys have obviously been here today because we've done some technical corners that will be coming soon and i think we should actually go through a few of these products because there's a few of these things i've never actually seen before starting with you simon with a, quite a long drill with a very interesting start. Yeah, so we have a, the master drills, uh, 30 times D, this is, uh, has specific ridged guides at the front to, the, to uh, um, help with regrinding and also for alignment, um, polished flutes. Um, it's reduced, got quite a bit of reduction in the, in the back of the diameter for clearance. I'm waiting for it. It has unequal <laughs> helical flutes. <laughs> we got there. It's about the fifth time of trying to attempt it. So yeah, it's um, it, a real good tool. Deep hole drill in. Uh, it's like I say a few. I think we've discussed it earlier on. A few people are a bit, little bit scared of it. Um, you know, but I would say that we've got a product range that can solve most problems in deep hole drilling. I think it comes to a point when. Most machinists listening will go, oh, deep hole drilling. I don't want to do it. Let's sub it out. But actually now, with the tooling coming from you guys, it seems like it should just be a breeze, like drilling a normal hole. Pretty much, yeah. I think if you follow the guidelines that we have, and it's, it's in the catalogue, and obviously with our knowledge as well, combined with the two, we can go in and following the set procedure that we have, there is a there is some steps you need to complete to be doing the the long series drilling um you will solve the problems you've got and no problems at all you know the grades we have cover most materials um so it can work really well and there was something we spoke about earlier and that is your experience because you guys are actually machinists before as well so you've actually got the knowledge yeah um we're all time served machinists. We've all been 
sales guys as well as applications engineers so we understand most situations and between the three of us if the one of us hasn't come across a problem on a job or a specific material it's pretty rare i would say but it's great to know you've actually got that back in as well that if i'm calling somebody out because i have a problem it's nice to know that i'm not just ringing bill in his shed who's gonna say oh you just need this or you just need that because paul we spoke about this earlier where mm. you guys sometimes actually use different tools for different materials that aren't actually made for it absolutely we 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 you know we sometimes put a an X on the block if you like we get awkward applications for materials that aren't that well known to us so you know we we don't shy away from these problems we want to solve them for our customers we want to make sure that they um they have the confidence going forward in hoffman that we can apply our expertise if you like and knowledge that we've got on these new materials to us we've got a, also we've got the backing of germany and worldwide you know we've got application engineers across all of the hoffman sites throughout the world so we share our knowledge base if you like so we've got a huge wealth of, of knowledge that we can draw from draw from so you have you've actually brought some reamers with you which we'll talk about a little later because there's something on your website i've never heard before but you've actually brought some some drills in yourself as well haven't you yes yes so we've got um Simon had a, a very big drill in his hand earlier. <laughs> Mine isn't so big, but it's what you do with it. It counts. <laughs> uh, so again, we talked about this earlier. So we've got micro drills, master steel micro drills, which uh, we have in various lengths from 0.8 of a millimeter up to three millimeters. And from uh, length ratio is going all the way up to 30 times D. And, so, if, and what's interesting to me is even at 0 0.8, there's no pecking. No pecking, so these can save huge amounts of time for our customers and solve problems. You know, they are designed for long chipping materials, awkward applications. You do need the um, all, all of the, the you know you need the requirement of through coolant with decent coolant pressure in a good, high quality, precise holder to be able to get the um, results that you need from these tools. But they are problem solvers. It just to me, it boggles my mind that you can take a 0.8 up to a three mil drill with the swarf that's going to be coming off that while drilling and still not have to peck out the way and the drill will just carry on through. It's a good job and you can't see the swarf. So, <laughs> you know, you've got to put your trust in, in what we do and what we say. And um, when we bring these products out, they've been thoroughly tested throughout uh, 13 test centers in Germany. And, you know, so we're finding out in our applications, what they can and can't do. We have a varied range of materials in the UK for our industries, you know, so aerospace and oil and gas, for instance, with exotic materials that can be really problematic. And we're testing these and getting fantastic results. And to me, if I was buying, buying tools, that's what you want to hear. You want to know that they've been tested over and over and over. They've not just been made and gone, yeah, that'll work. It's nice to hear that they've been tested so much. Now, the second set of tools you brought in was reamers. And people who've listened to me on other things will know how much I do not like reamers. Because you can essentially do a full job. You've got one hole to ream. It cuts oversize. Job scrapped. But after listening to what we were talking about earlier, I think you changed my mind on it. So what were some of the reamers you brought with you today? So we brought, um, we have different reamers for through holes, blind holes. We also have color coded system again. So the color coded system enables you to drill down and make sure you've got the right reamer for the right material spec. And uh, the solid carbide. So tool life is really good on them. Combine that with a good drill, a good holder that the holders the tools being in so that the tools are running through you should be able to we believe we'll be able to produce a hole to the right tolerance that you require i'm glad you said holder because we actually did a little test earlier with one of your holders where as people at home will know if you get a nice h7 tolerance and you drop a pin in that pin will slowly slowly fall in but the fit between your holder and shank was that good i stuck the tool in 
and it just didn't move. And that was after I'd been holding this tool for a good five, six minutes. So I was like thinking, oh no, I'm going to put it in, it's going to fall through. But it didn't. The fit was just unreal. Yeah, I think it's a H6, H6 yes. tolerance yeah. hole, um, which is basically a slide fit in in engineering terms, I suppose. And so you, you do have to then sort of slide that into the into the hole. So it tries to ensure that you've got maximum grip around the tool um, so that it keeps it running true and also help maintains that the, the, the torque that you need to hold that tool when it's under stress in the in the job. And just the, la the last thing I'd, I'd like to talk about before we get to Lee and his massive tap. Um, <laughs> your website, when you're needing a reamer, you don't just sell set sizes, do you? No, the um, the website you can. There are standard uh, incremental sizes uh, that are available in H7 tolerance, and then you can go on the within that tool and select a size that you need with the tolerance that you need to produce that, and it will the, the software will go away, generate a quote for you, um, which we then will will uh, you can order, um, and we will produce it in Germany, and it will be sent over to uh, the UK. Because let's be honest, we've all seen prints with some really weird and wonderful looking tolerances we've all been there so it's great it's great to know if i've got a hole instead of trying to drill it and then interpolate it i can actually get for production purposes i can actually get a a reamer made specifically for that job yeah now lee sorry you've been a bit quiet on the end of the table <laughs> hard um, to get a word in <laughs> <laughs> well problem with simon i mean <laughs> but you've actually brought some taps in today which i've find quite interesting because it's essentially one tap does all yeah so our master tap range we've had it on the market for four or five years now and it, and it is it, it is fairly unique it's um it's got a, a multi-purpose grind so it cuts really well in a variety of materials which is i think pretty unique a lot of people have a, a tap which they say will do with the materials but basically it's usually a steel tap that just happens to be okay on stainless or something else Ours is genuinely will give good results in a wide range of materials, soft and hard. So steels, aluminiums, titaniums, um, brasses, you know, the, the cast irons. It'll cut pretty much across the board. And it's done that well for us. It's been, I think it's probably been one of the best um, new releases that we've had in recent memory. Um, that we're starting to fill in niche areas. So we brought out now that, the HT taps. <laughs> So high tensile steel, so your your two locks you know, your two locks forty fours, your hard ox four hundreds, your quenched and tempered steels. We've also got a blue bander, which in in the Hoffman world is for stainless, but it's for the duplex stainlesses and the acid resistant stainless of the really aggressive ones, which the master tap will do, but in those sort of niche areas we're bringing out a dedicated tap. Just so to make sure we can get even more life out of it. It's nice to see that like We've said one tap will do all, but when you're trying to do the really, yeah, really hard or really soft and squidgy material, and you're trying to knife and fork your way through, it's great to know that there's a a, a tap specific for all applications, essentially. Yeah. So if you were in dire mold, you you probably still only have one tap, but it'd be the red band, the HT, because you're doing uh, die steels all the time. So that would be your one tap. Um, yeah, if you're in oil and gas, you'd probably go with the blue tap because you're going to be doing duplexes, mm. probably super duplexes, those types of, of stainlesses. And I like to say we've all been there. I have. I don't think, well, I'd hope not many people have, where you've, had, you've got to get your tap into a hole in a really awkward place. So, you, so you're grinding the shank of the tap back or you trying to make a holder yeah i, I worked at a machine tool company and we used to braise taps into done that two great lengths of tool steel <laughs> to get into places yeah so we've all done it when you have to you have to but yeah. but then you've actually brought some out to stop people having to do that yeah so we've had tap extensions for for quite a long time and they're quick release but obviously the diameter the outside diameter is bigger than the tap although not much but there's still situations where you don't want that you need to get in even closer so we brought out extended length taps in the the master tap series to again to fill that small niche you know the main series probably covers 80 85 percent of scenarios but now it's doing that well for us we're filling in the odd little areas where we we didn't have um an ideal offering we had other taps long series taps not from the master steel range so it seemed obvious to 
to go down that route. And talking about taps, we have got actually got some videos which we will put over this of the swarf coming out of that tap because that tap, them taps aren't normal. Your swarf goes straight up the tap. It all gets round the holder and then you in with your gloves trying to pick it out. But they don't do that. No, um, they, they spend quite a long time developing this. It's a unique grind and um, a unique coating. So the, the coating is much harder and smoother. And there's a unique grind where they actually grind the back of the tooth so the swarf is directed up and away at an angle rather than straight up the tap. So there's no opportunity really for it to wrap around when you're doing um, uh, blind holes. It, and the video, you can see it actually coming up and away. And I think it is pretty unique. <laughs> I have had it once where I was tapping a, a multiple set of holes. And it's one of them. It's running, you walk away, come back. All the swarfs around the tool holder. Tool tries to change, can't grab it, throws it across the machine. Big mm. bang. And then same as everything. Everyone in the shop's a meerkat. Looking. Mm. Everyone comes running around and you're like, here we go again. You normally get a big cheer when something happens, <laughs> yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd like to a guy cheer. I don't. Yeah. Usually go, oh, he's done it again. <laughs> Now, you've actually brought, I think the last thing we'll talk about before we talk more in detail about your catalogue, and then I actually want to hear some of your customer stories, is your quick change tap extension. Because it's quite unique, as in it's quick change, but it's also got the synchro um, aspect yeah. to it as well. Yeah, so we call it MLA, so minimal length adjustment. So it's got 0.2 in compression and uh, 1 mil in tension. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's quick release, so it's just got a collar on the outside. You push forward to release the um, the interchangeable bit. It takes a standard ER collet. We we tend to use the square drive ER collets so that we get a you know a direct drive to the tap. So there's there's no chance of it slipping. I mean, it shouldn't with with this type of holder <laughs> anyway. But you know, it's always it's always good to be safe than sorry, isn't it? It is. <laughs> but that surely that must be great for waves because obviously they've usually got. They've yeah. not got many tools. They're filled up by drills. So you can set that with four or five different taps and just have a pause in your program just to swap them out. Yeah, or job and chops, the typical scenario where they're, they're doing short runs and they change three or four times a day. You can switch over to, I mean, you're going to be tapping. If you're in a job and shop, you're going to be tapping most of your, your jobs, but it'll be different sizes. It's, it's always the way. It's never the one size all day. No. So that's a quick change from job to job. So your setup times are reduced. So again, it's a cost saving. And I think that's one of the biggest things we need to get across because everything we've spoke about today is everything's just cost saving. It's all about faster run times and saving money. And I think that comes to your catalog as well because your catalog has every single bit of information you'll need on every single tool for every single purpose you'll use it for. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it does. Um, it, 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 there's a lot of not information in there. There's a lot of information available through the eShop as well, um, which we have, and also the Tool Scout. So the Tool Scout is something that we, we as guys do rely on as well because what that does is allows you to put a specific material and it will tailor the speed and the feed and whether you need coolant or not um, for specific materials. So that's another great bit of kit that we have that we can use. Um, and you can select everything from milling, threading, turning, even gauges now, I believe, are on there as well. So you can put your tolerances you want, it'll tell you what gauge you need. See, I've seen, I've seen um, speed and feed optimization websites before, but none of them have ever told me to use coolant or not. Yeah, some of the inserts that we have um, are designed not to be used with coolant. So if you're machining your steels, and it'll tell you if you could use, maybe use air instead, which gives you, would give you better tool life. Um, so it just depends on really on the application. Obviously, with the, your, the likes of your stainless and stuff that, and the heat resistance, you need coolant. But some of the the plainer steels, the softer steels, that you can you can run our inserts, and it gives you better tool life. Um, now, just before we finish this podcast, I've got to come back to you, Paul, because we've had one of the best cost savings I've ever heard from a single tool. But it's you've actually brought two tools in with two cost savings. So we'll start with one that was eighteen and a half thousand pound cost savings. Sorry, I never got to swap <laughs> yeah. there. So can you talk us about a little bit about that? 
It was the first application I tried with this drill. So it's the Master Steel micro drill, and it was um, a copper material, so pr very problematic. Long chipping, the materials very heat reactive, so it, drilling is a real problem for this. And the customer didn't really want the job, but it was an important customer for them. So they had to tackle it one way or another. And they saw us at the Mac exhibition. We talked about the product actually on MTD CNC Live. And- Oh, uh, that's not a quick plug there, is exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> and we, we, so I went in over to the company, looked at the application, and then we applied the tool. We didn't peck. The customer was absolutely blown away. 18 and a half thousand pounds saving was achieved and the, the operator was scared to press the button. He was amazed that the, the drill was still there after the first hole. And then after 144 holes, completing the, the complete um, batch of parts, the tool didn't look what we could see of it. We, it didn't look like it had been touched at all. Um, now the customer wants a lot more of that, that particular job. Well, you, so, I think I think I'd want a lot more of that job if I'm saving eighteen and a half thousand pounds. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> when you consider small drills like this, uh, you'd be pecking at maybe I don't know half times diameter or even even quarter times diameter isn't uncommon. When you can do a, a, you know that complete hole depth without pecking, it's a huge saving on time. Now that's just one. Obviously, these are two we've just picked. There's been multiple savings, but. This next one absolutely blows my mind because there's a part in this story and if you don't get it, I'm going to put it in because it's amazing. But what was the cost saving on this single drill? So one single drill, this is a master steel feed drill. So another, th this is the three flute um, tool that's universal. It's got the green band on it. it. We applied it on a stainless steel component in our customer on a nice machine, Matsura machine, 70 bar coolant pressure but it was a cross hole, uh, stainless steel 316. Not only did the tool save him five minutes per component on the cycle time, it did, uh, the initial trial was to say, right, well, if we can achieve 50% increase in tool life, we wanna buy that tool. After a year and a half, they stopped counting how many parts <laughs> it did. Um, five years, the tool was in the machine. And it only broke, they actually think it broke prematurely because they put the wrong spot drill in. Oh, no. <laughs> so it could have still be going to this day if they hadn't done that. Um, it, it produced a saving of £40,000. £40,000. And they yeah. think it only broke because somebody loaded the wrong yeah. spot drill. Well, what did they say? They, they Usually sacked human him. error that <laughs> breaks always. something. It's always. Yeah. But that's... And, I didn't have to jump in there because we got in the, yeah. that was a cross hole in stainless 316. Absolutely. I mean, with a green tap. Yeah, we, we achieved over 400 meters of tool life, which you, you've considered any, any drill, any solid carbide drill, steel, you would think that was an amazing result. I think that, that was good in aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And say you've done it in stainless 316 is just mind boggling. Now, this, the same customer has, uh, he machined some problematic materials. Haynes 230 is one of them, Hasloy X, which is notoriously difficult with regard to tool life. It's a very abrasive material with, you know, quite a, it's got nickel and chromium in it. So it normally wears tools very, very quickly. I tried it on the nickel alloys. Um, and I was amazed at the success that we got from that. We increased the feed rate by a third, just because I had an extra tooth on the, on the, on the drill compared to our competitor. And we went, the customer's uh, results went for, on tool life, went from 20 parts all the way up to 160 parts, which again, huge saving. And I think to me, what gets me is, and I think I've spoke to all three of you at some point today about this is, you guys don't just go in and say, oh, we're doing stainless, here are our stainless tools. You go, oh, oh, you're doing stainless. Well, we'll try this, we'll try this, we'll try this, until you find the very best application. And I think, do you think that sets you above others? I believe so. I think, you know, we, we're, we're always tasked with challenges, which is why personally I love the job because it's, every day's a, a school day, you're learning something, you're going to different, you see different companies, how they, with different approaches and different problems to solve. Um, 
and the way we go about things is not just looking to say, well, we've got a stainless drill for that job. We've got umpteen number of tools that could do the job, different methods that we could employ. So we look to try and give the best solution to our customers and make them more profitable. That's our task. Well, gentlemen, I think all I can say after that is thank you very much. The amount of information, my head's about to explode. <laughs> and I'm going to say it again. I've said it five or six times. £40,000 is just ridiculous. And I'd just like to say thank you to you all at home for listening or watching. Please drop a like and subscribe. And if there's anything you would like us to cover on the podcast, or you would like to get involved on a podcast, then drop a comment below. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.